Hey everybody, welcome back to the Lug It All podcast. This is your host, Elias Roush. This podcast is sponsored by EliasRoushMedia.com, photo, video, digital media production. Today we are discussing The Last of Us TV show featured on HBO Max. The Last of Us is an American post-apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic, that's hard to say, American, let's do that again. The Last of Us is an American post-apocalyptic television series created by Craig Mazin and Neil Druckmann for HBO. Based on the 2013 video game developed by Naughty Dog, the series is set to dev- uh, set 20 years after a mass fungal infection sparked a global pandemic. It follows Joel, who's played by Pedro Pascal, a smuggler tasked with escorting the teenage Ellie, who's played by Bella Ramsey, both somewhat have their roots really grounded in Game of Thrones, but we won't uh, talk about the GOT of it all. Both of them are making their names outside of the GOT realm. Pedro Pascal has been in tons of franchises from shows that we've discussed as The Mandalorian all the way down to uh, Narcos. Like I said, even uh, fantasy uh, realm stuff as Game of Thrones. Um yeah, so I and I believe Bella Ramsey has a bright future ahead of her as well. So it's uh, across the post apocalyptic uh, the United States. Guest stars Nico Parker as Joel's uh, daughter Sarah, Gabriel Luna as Joel's younger brother Tommy, Muriel uh, Danridge as Resistance leader Marlene, Anna Torv as uh, Joel's smuggler partner Tess, and. Continuing on, The Last of Us is said to be the largest television production in Canadian history. It was filmed in Alberta from uh, July 2021 to June 2022. It is the first HBO series based on a video game and is a joint production by Sony Pictures Television. PlayStation Productions, Naughty Dog, and The Mighty Mint and Word Games. Uh, The uh, first season consists of nine episodes written by Druckmann, who wrote and co-directed the original game. And I haven't played the game, so I'm coming at this specifically from just kind of hearing through the grapevine about the story, how great it is, how much, uh, how lived in it is, and how it has um, uh, kind of paved the way for... uh, cinematic storytelling on a game level. So it was written by Druckmann, who wrote and co-wrote the original game, directed the original game, and Mazin. Um, The score was composed by Gustavo Sanatola, who's composed for the game, and David Fleming. The Last of Us premiered on January 15, 2023. It's received acclaim from critics who's praised... The performances, writing, production, design, and score. Several have called it the best live adaptation of a video game across linear channels and HBO Max. The series premiere was watched by 4.7 million viewers on the first day, the second biggest for HBO since 2010, and over 10 million after two days. 10 million viewers after two days. And I believe, what was it, Game of Thrones, House of the Dragons premiered around, I think it was around 10 million. So that's, uh, these are big numbers for HBO. And um, I believe that we've at least got two seasons of this uh, of this adaptation, but um, I'm going to continue to learn about it as it goes. So um, I have watched the first two episodes, and that's kind of what we are going to cover today still to be determined how much we're going to cover of this specific series on the channel so you know subscribe like what you can do and also let me know how how i can improve probably start by uh talking straight but um it's like middle of the afternoon i haven't had my coffee uh my afternoon coffee pot you know so i'm just kind of a little bit in the daze and i just watch the the show so i'm feel like i got like the mushrooms kind of going in my head right now what's going on you so um yeah, a little bit in the days after watching that second episode. But for everyone that has not seen the series, let's kind of cover that real quick. Should you or should you not watch it? And is this uh, show going to be for you? And so 
I will say, uh, you know, kind of going into this blind, not having any idea about these characters, but just based off the marketing and whatnot, I did feel like it was everyone was just like, all right, let's get these characters on the road. Let's show what the apocalypse is in the best in the best and most interesting manner. And we're not going to talk about spoilers yet. We're going to kind of talk about this in this non spoiler section for everybody that has not seen it yet. So with saying that it's an impeccable series it is um it's extremely well shot it's very rich with even though it's kind of dreary but the the colors in it really pop the blacks are really black the inky the 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 actual sets and the actual uh the physical locations and what's what you're seeing on screen just feels very rich and colorful and texture textured as well as the storytelling as well i feel like the storytelling has been um very organic in the way that it was told the first two episodes very much root you into what the rest of the the series is going to you know preclude to and allude to and and eventually go to um i have a little bit of insight just a little in, in the future so i'm not gonna really dwell on that too much but with saying that i think this is it does follow some of the same types of storytelling that you would see in other um, post-apocalyptic shows, movies, such as the first season of The Walking Dead. Everyone's going to be comparing the t- post-apocalyptic way this is approaching it to. Um, and everyone, I think, would probably agree that just about the first season of The Walking Dead did pretty phenomenal. And it was shot uh, just it blew everybody out the water. No one had seen anything to that degree. It later went on to make about 10 seasons and eventually kind of falling off and losing most of its fans um, along the way. I don't believe The Last of Us is going to head that direction, but it did have some of the same similar setups and the way that the post-apocalyptic world was happening and how things were, um, you know, the world was kind of decaying, whether it was small signs of the day-to-day life that's like... Or if it was, um, uh, you, you know, the dramatic side of, you know, their st- storytelling tends to say in post-apocalyptic, you know, it's it's not so much the characters that you have to, or sorry, it's not so much the virus that you have to worry about or the the contagion so much. It's more about the people around in the world and how how crazy the world can be after that. And so, with regards of saying like. Um, you know, you, you protect the girl, protect the mission, take her on the mission, take her on the road and take her to the, the checkpoint or take her to the wherever. It is very much of that same kind of, uh, not cle- it's not a cliche, but it is a trope. It's, you know, the, the older guy has to take the kind of the inquisitive young one to wherever the uh, destination may be. And that's not always uh, a post-apocalyptic setting, but I have a list right here of other movies and other similar properties that kind of have the, 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 what is it, the uh, wolf and cub? Is that what the, um, uh, the trope is called, where it's um, got the old grizzled one and then kind of got the young person? So movies like The Road, which was based off of another novel, a 2006 post-apocalyptic uh uh, book and um, later became a movie as well in, in 2009 and as as well as uh, I Am Legend which was a 2007 movie ba- loosely based off of a 1954 novel uh, Richard Matheson novel so it's kind of got those same sort of I, w- I don't want to say tropes but I, I will say a lot of the same ways that you see the world kind of decaying in certain ways, it's it's kind of similar. And so um, with saying that, I don't feel like it's shown me anything that I haven't seen in other post-apocalyptic type shows. But with saying that, it's, it's executing the post-apocalyptic manner and world at a, uh, such a high degree. Other television shows like The Walking Dead... Uh, also include uh, movies and sorry television shows television adaptation called uh, Station Eleven it was on my top 10 television shows of last year and it just blew me out of the water and this show has very similar um, aspects as uh, Station Eleven does Uh, 
And so continuing on with uh, The Last of Us, I will say uh, the first episode just kind of keeps you going. It, it just, you know, it introduces you to the world. It introduces you to the, the virus. It introduces you to how the world is, you know, decaying. And without any spoilers or anything like that, I think it's done to one of the highest degrees, one of the highest levels you can do it. It just looks like a million bucks it's highly entertaining i would watch it now if you don't like the first episode or if you don't want to deal with like post-apocalyptic type type stuff i can totally understand that um it can be kind of a lot to handle at some points and um you know just was saying that uh if you don't think you want post-apocalyptic stuff you're probably not going to like it it's kind of like a, a will you won't you kind of thing i feel like it's kind of binary if you uh, are interested in post-apocalyptic kind of it can be depraved you know especially um uh living through the last pa the, the 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 pandemic of the last uh century then it's not exactly something that you want to jump into i don't blame you but with saying that it's executed at a super high degree the second episode continues in and without any spoilers or anything like that it it continues to give us more character development it it shows us a little bit more of the world and it also gives us a little bit more insight into um you know the causes of it but doesn't exactly reveal its full hand so you know non-spoiler that's uh that's kind of the review it's shot impeccably well it's acted impeccably well it's everything you would expect in an hbo drama or any other type of niche uh, show that HBO would put in, but they're putting their balls to the wall. I mean, they're putting the money where they need it. $600,000 per episode. Uh, Pedro Pascal is getting paid for this. That is that not crazy high? Uh, but I mean, he, 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 uh, um, <laughs> let me see. He, uh, accepted it in 24 hours. Okay. So let, let me look at this real quick. Um, let me make sure this doesn't have any, um, uh, I don't want to. I actually, I'm not going to do this. Permission to work. Okay, so actually, uh, this is okay. I think this is not. And um, I'm just scanning this real quick to make sure it's not spoiler. Okay, so Pedro Pascal is Joel, hardened middle aged survivor, is tormented by the trauma of his past. Joel is tasked with the smuggling of a young girl, Ellie, out of the quarantine zone. Uh, across the United States. Unlike in the games, which require Joel to have moments of near like superhuman abilities in order to allow the progress, he is more vulnerable in the series. Um, I don't want to say this last line. Okay, so Pedro uh, Pascal became available for a new series after the release of the second season of The Mandalorian. So, attracted several, he was attracted. Uh, several offers for projects from large networks which he chose the last of us i mean this guy he's been on every netflix he's he's on disney and now he's on hbo again um and so partly to work with co-creator craig mazin mazin and the co-creator co neil Druckmann had been considering pascal for some time and i believe the original character is caucasian but we have Pascal, who is obviously, I think he's of Chilean descent or maybe Argentinian or something. Um, but who cares? He's a, he's a phenomenal actor. And as someone that's not looking at this with a critical eye of like, it's it, it, criticizing it for saying, um, y'all y'all don't have the same, you know, ethnicity as the character on the game. I don't, you know, I don't care. Um, if it tells a good story, and obviously, his, the history is when when you're changing when you're changing historical figures of their ethnicities. That's when it gets a little bit weird. This guy's fictional. I don't really see this. Doesn't you know? Pascal's excellent. Yada yada. You know the rest. So, um, yeah, let's hop into the spoilers for this um, non. Sorry for the first two episodes of this, uh, the Last of Us. TV show. So for everyone dropping out and that's going to watch The Last of Us, thank you for listening, watching Lock It Out Podcast, subscribing, thumbs upping, luckitoutpodcast.com for all of the links, all of the stuff you need to know on Lock It Out Podcast is all there. You know what to do to subscribe if you're on uh, iPhone, iTunes, all that, five stars on iTunes that helps us stay up in the ranks and helps us keep us going and rolling and you know what, if you cannot uh, 
donate, then all of those ways uh, help, especially sharing the podcast as well. And so thank you for listening, watching Look It All Podcast. Let's hop into the spoiler section. It's not going to be a long one, everyone, because it's just first two episodes. And the majority of the people probably watching are people that haven't watched the show or just, you know, kind of like, wait, what's going on again? And uh, the other people are like hardcore, probably Last of Us fans. And so I apologize. I'm not going too in depth with this, but this is mostly just from the first watch and uh, visualizations of the first two episodes and understanding, you know, what what we learned in these first two episodes. So essentially what we've learned, spoilers again for everybody, um, Joel, his um, his home life, it starts, first of all, the first episode starts in like the 60s where they're kind of explaining what could happen if this fungus, you know, hits a certain critical temperature and I'm going to say virus a lot of times. I think it's actually some sort of fungus. I, I don't remember the, the different criticisms of what everybody's calling this, but you know what I mean. The disease, the, fun, the virus, the fungus, all of that, I'm just going to call it the same thing. So forgive me for getting all of that scientifically wrong, but you know what I mean by what, what, whatever. Um, but anyways, the, the first episode really gets us in the, in the mix. I'll give a little synopsis of this, uh, of the first episode real quick. In 2003, a mass fungal infection sparks a global pandemic. Joel flees with his daughter, Sarah, who's played by the impeccable Tandy Newton's daughter. Uh, what is her name again? Um, Sarah. Okay, so Sarah, who 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 is she played by? Anyways, Tandy Newton's daughter. God dang it! All right, sorry, I can't find her name at the moment. But Nico Parker. Um, my God, she looks exactly, exactly like her. Oh my! I gotta go close this. Hold on. Sorry, I had to close the window. All that sunlight was blasting me. So anyways, uh, so anyways, yeah, Nico Parker, Nico Parker is, um, Tandy Newton's daughter. Amazing in it. She's in it for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, give or take. And she's playing uh, Joel's daughter. I was blown away. It put her in anything. Put her in everything. I want her. In, I want them both in something. If they could play some sort of fictional daughter, uh, Tandy Newton and uh, mother daughter combo in something. Oh my gosh, that would powerhouse performances. It's happening. I can already see it. Um, so, anyways. First episode. Basically, we go through the trauma of him losing his daughter. And with his brother, Tommy, Sarah is killed by a soldier and he's traumatized by it. And it, it's, there's a there's a part where Tanny Newton's daughter, Sarah, is um, is kind of in the her neighbor's house. And this lady is they've blurred out the back while she's kind of like checking, like she's like looking at the books or something like that while she's like visiting her neighbors. And this like elderly lady in the back is like, <laughs> like 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 cranking out like some zombie shit going on with like these like the fungal shit going and whatnot but, it, but it's all blurred behind her and then later she comes in contact with these her neighbor again it is it's a fucking traumatizing ass scene i know they're doing old people dirty by making them look all crazy and creepy but i and i think this could probably be one of the last portrayals we'll see in a in one of these virus movies where it's just like an old person just like you know just losing their shit <laughs> i'm just like oh my god you know so um anyways Joel flees with his daughter. She's shot. Brother, he, his brother is fleeing, flees with them. Sarah's killed by a soldier. 20 years later, um, Joel lives in Boston quarantine zone managed by the Federal Disaster Response Agency, FEDRA, working as a smuggler with his partner, Tess. Um, when Tommy fails to connect 
sorry, to contact them from Wyoming. They buy a car battery from a local dealer, Robert, but are double crossed when he sells it to the Fireflies, who are like the underground syndicate of like rebels that are trying to, you know, fight against the Fedras. Uh, corporation, kind of like the big man, um, a rebel uh, group in open opposition against Fedra. Attempting to retrieve it, Joel and Tess discover Marlene, who the Firefly's leader, um, the, sorry, the Firefly's leader, who begs them to take Ellie to the Massachusetts State House in exchange for the truck so they, they can go get Joel's brother, um, Tommy. So they say, yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll do it. We'll take the girl to the place, and the place, obviously, is going to be perfectly fine, and everything is going to go normal. So while sneaking out, the three are caught by a soldier. So this is kind of like a whole nother semi. It's, it's Joel all over again. Everything's flooding back. He, he's remembering holding his daughter, and his daughter is like, you know, great. He's, he's having, like, the flashbacks. He's just like, oh, my gosh. And I got to say, the death of Sarah is so well shot. I... She, you don't see many uh, deaths like this on TV. It's normally the, you know, the take, they say the one last thing and then don't forget me, you know, is something like that. But she is just like, she's horrified. You see it on her face that she's, she's like trying to grab him, you know, and he's like, he's like, you know, it's going to be okay. It's going to be, you know, he's just trying to tell her it's going to be okay as he's telling himself it's trying to be okay it's all just trying to reassure everybody even though everyone knows and tommy's the first one to kind of de declare he's just like man it's not you know this is not happening she's bleeding out from the shot and you know they're in the field and it's got the wide shot and then you just it, it you, you look at tommy and then the camera pans back and in between the time you just see sarah's lifeless body just like done and i was just like whoa Beautifully acted, impeccably shot. The death scene, that's how it's done. You don't go for the, you know, don't forget me, you know, kind of shit. It's it's the, you were literally dying so fast, you don't even know what to do. You know, in, in, in on both parties of Pascal and uh, Nico Parker, it, it, it just blew me away. And I was like, the, the acting is impeccable. Uh, let me see what else we got in here. So, yeah, and we're introduced to the, the different factions and overall the first episode when you're lost in the darkness, uh, it slaps. It's one of the strongest pilots I've ever seen. And it does kind of borrow from certain aspects of other post-apocalyptic shows that I've spoken about earlier in this podcast, but we're not going to go to specifics, so we don't have any details like that, uh, you know, spoiler details. But to the degree that I was like, hmm... Y'all must have saw that on another one. Y'all saw that on the uh, that one movie. Y'all saw that on one that one show. And but they do it again, and they have the HBO money, and they're like, we're gonna do it just as good. So, number two, episode two is infected. So episode two, we're again we're talking spoilers and everything. This is directed by Neil Druckmann and uh, written by Craig Mazin. And for clarity's sake, they did not they did not drop both of these episodes on the same day. They dropped them uh, week one, week two. I think it's going to be every single other week, every other week, or sorry, every week, every Sunday. I said that the most day. Uh, the first one was on the fifteenth. This the other one was on the twenty second. Next week's going to be on the 29th, You know, so on and so forth. Two days. Two days before the day of the outbreak, in Jakarta, Indonesia, a mycologist learns of an oncoming pandemic and advises the government to bomb the city to prevent it from spreading. It is, again, another impeccably, amazingly well, horrifyingly well shot pieces of uh, the show. It is almost just like a correlation of one of the doctors kind of seeing on the diagnosis of one of these patients and then they are diagnosed as this lady and lady we later we find out uh what this lady did but when she's kind of like plow she's got like these tongs that she's kind of going in the mouth and we just we all know what's going to come out of that mouth and at, everyone thinks i think most people would say that most zombie movies 
wouldn't have the restraint and would just have this lady get the doctor get eaten by the pa- by the patient um, and the stuff coming out and just completely obliterated. They have the restraint to not do that, but they do have enough uh, wherewithal to give us the you know the pliers going in and the mushroom stuff coming out. I can't remember exactly what the the para the para something. Uh, I can't remember what they call the uh, the uh, the virus stuff. I'm trying to find the name. I I, I want a, the mass fungal infection. Let me see. Da, 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 da. I, I don't see the name of it. Um, but they do have like a sign in the first episode that kind of was describing the different symptoms and stuff. If you if they have uh, if they are at risk, and they also have these like little detectors that basically say red or green if they are infected as well. And we do find out one thing I didn't say in the first episode is we find out that Ellie's infected, and by the end of the second episode, you should have watched it by now, we find out she's been bitten again, but the infection is not spreading, so we find out essentially that she's got some sort of immunity to it, maybe some immune blood, some vaccine type stuff. Save the girl, save the world! Wasn't I don't remember what that was. Was that a Heroes reference or something? I, I, I never saw it. I just know the, the tagline, I guess. But anyways, but we're going to take that tagline and use it here because it's essentially the same thing. So hopefully she's got some sort of immunity considered she's been bitten again. Also on the bad side is Tess got bit in this episode. I want to say that the majority of this episode is them kind of just exploring the world. And I got to say that the world looks fucked on so many levels. <laughs> but um, and the zombies, oh my gosh, they scary as fuck. Got the got the, got these, I, I think they're called clickers or something like that. I don't know if they've gotten official names in the, the show. But my buddy had asked me if I knew what a clicker was. And I was like, I think it's the zombies. So I'm going to call them that until we get an official name, I guess. And so... The the mushrooms coming out of the heads are like, it's like, oh, my God, you know, it's like, ah, ah, and so, you know, there's a couple action scenes. It's, you know, horrifying. It kind of reminds me of some of the scenes that we've seen in I Am Legend when he's like scavenging. I think it's New York or Chicago or something. Um, but it does remind me of when they're like rummaging through the post-apocalyptic nature of the world. Very scary. So, um, yeah, let me go through this real quick. The. Uh, so that one um, flashback of the Jakarta mycologist saying basically all we can do right now after she finds out that the lady that had the mushroom stuff coming out of it, she's like, yeah, she bit a couple other people and those people had to be executed. And so the military is like, what do we do? She's like, the best thing we can do right about now is just blow her up, just blow her sky high. And so, you know, the, the military guy's like, oh, you know, like, uh, maybe that's not a great idea, but uh, what are our other options? So I don't think exactly if we know what happened over there. Um, do we, I don't know if we get uh, confirmation if that actually happened. But, uh, yeah. Also, I do got to say the uh, the logo, sorry, not the logo, the, um, the opening intro, pretty good, pretty good. I like it better than... Um, I think a lot of people were disappointed by the House of the Dragon opening. Just kind of, it's just kind of muddy and grumpy and grudgy, and I just can't see shit going on in comparison to how good the Game of Thrones intro was. This is kind. Of, it's not quite a Game of Thrones intro, but it's better than House of the Dragon, and uh, you know, it's kind of showing the the growing of the fungus and all this stuff kind of is very gross looking and cool at the same time kind of looks a little bit a lot of things remind me of the daredevil intro of the pouring of the blood on this and making statues and stuff that that uh, that one always resonates with me with one of the most interesting intros as well this one's pretty good too i like the color in it and of course we got the the music from the original game which helps kind of uh, branch us in there um put us in the mode so um in the present, Ellie explains to Joel and Tess that she is being transported west in hopes of being the cure, being used to find the cure. Discovering the path to their meetup will be uh, to their meetup to be swarmed in. Sorry, discover. Let me read one. Discovering their path. Sorry, discovering the path to their meetup to be swarmed with infected. They cut through a museum and are attacked by two blind infected called clickers one of whom bites Ellie before Joel and Tess kill them. 
the trio let me just say that it's pretty cool how they have like the um clickers hiding within the museum in in a dark museum everyone looks like a possible clicker because there's statues of military men and old military men from the 1800s or something like that but you can't tell if it's, it's like is that a zombie or is that a model zombie model no no that's a zombie oh god you know you so you gotta like watch out so you kind of find you're playing like where's waldo with the clickers a little bit watching them with them and uh you know, even though I don't have a controller, I I would en- I think I would enjoy this game. I'm I'm uh, I'm a little bit reserved in buying a brand new PS5, but if I do, I'm gonna get this game with it. I think my PS4 is dying on me. That's a whole other story. We'll talk. It's it's definitely infected with something. It's got it's got the virus. <laughs> um, so what else do we got? So they killed the two blind and uh, clickers, and these clickers are big motherfuckers. Like one of them has like the, I mean, they both got the the, the little thing going on, but you know they got some lanky ass arms. One of them was like, well, what you gonna do? What you gonna, whoosh, you know, you, you you might get, you know, get got by one of them things. So, anyways, <laughs> um. The trio arrives at the state house only to find the fireflies slaughtered by one another after after another member was infected. So this was a kind of thing, a couple of parts of these first two episodes. I don't I don't know if I should really put it all on the show about this. So um I will go say like the tropes I keep saying, there's a couple quote unquote predictable things that have happened in the first two episodes that I've been kind of unsurprised about but then other parts i've been like whoa i'm surprised they actually did that so um, it's it's kind of weird some parts i'm like way surprised like oh i was uh, i've seen that in four other movies and then the other other one is you know not one of them would be the the girl being um having a vaccine in her blood i feel like that's kind of a trope in most of post-apocalyptic movies um Another one would be this flashback we get with the doctor. I think we've seen this in other films and other movies. Like, I, you know, I, I am legend. We're following the doctor and we get flashbacks with Will, Will Smith as he's kind of, I think he's going through it. Um, uh, I can't remember the road as well, so I'm not going to refer to it as much, but, um, We've seen them follow the doctors, the scientists. We've seen them save the girl, save the world. We've seen um, a couple of the action style scenes. I feel like we've kind of seen them in the first episode. But these are done at such a high level that like the airplane sequence, it's done at such a high level. It's just like you got to be impressed. And it's the CGI looks it looks great and it blends in really well. So it's hard to be upset about that. Um and I'm not really upset about it. I'm just saying this other thing of, all right, we got to take the girl to the place where, oh, they're all dead. It's like, I f- feel like we've seen that a couple times, too, in other zombie movies. Maybe Vampire, maybe 28 Days Later or something like that. I don't know. Um, uh, Dawn of the Dead, maybe. I'm not, I can't remember off the top of my head some of these because it's been a very long time since I've seen them. But we've seen, go, oh, we got to take them to the compound and the compound's blown up or it's done or it's not what we expected actually walking dead kind of has one of those plots and it's you know we get to the the place we've been waiting to go to and it's not what we thought um anyways tess reveals she was bitten while ellie's bite begins to heal proving her immunity i thought this was kind of a cool juxtaposition but i didn't want tess to die because tess was one of my favorite fl- uh a fav- my tess was one of my favorite flavors tess was one of my favorite characters on um on the show and you know considering we basically only have three main characters as of right now anna torf uh australian actress oh my god she's she's phenomenal and she's kind of of that like Kate Blanchett, Carrie Coon esque variant, and I am here for that variant. I, I, yeah. So maybe Tess is, uh, is what we're looking for here. But why did we have to lose her? I didn't want to have to lose her like that. And she's such a badass. I just, I don't know who I'm looking at right now. But I, the camera's over here. But uh, I, I, she's such a badass that I'm just like, damn. I really wish we could have held her. And technically. We didn't see the body. Oh, we saw her get, you know, splooged in the mouth with the damn, uh, the fungus in the mouth. I was like, oh, 
God, that's disgusting. And uh, phrasing also. I, I didn't I didn't literally mean whatever. So, the, so oh, court sepsis is the infection, by the way. That, that was taking me a minute to find it. Let me see a couple things about uh, Bella Ramsey real quick. Bella Ramsey, Ellie is Ellie is 14-year-old girl who plays much defiance and anger but has a private need for kinship and belonging. Like, don't we all? And I believe Bella Ramsey turned 18 in between this um, in this show while she is filming. She is immune to court sepsis infection and may be the key to creating a vaccine in keeping with the games. She is a lesbian, uh, according to Wiki. I don't I don't know um, around. 105 actors had been considered for Ellie. The producers sought a performer who could portray a resourceful, quirky, and potentially violent character. And after seeing her performance on Game of Thrones, I think she can do all of that. Right now, I am kind of waiting to have more of an emotional connection to Ellie right now, but I really do feel like she's carrying everything else that she's given. She's, you know, she's playing ball with the big dogs of uh, Pedro Pascal and Anna Torf. She's just as good of an actress as everyone else, if not better. And I think that we're probably going to see her grow as an actress on this show. I'm way more... I guess, um, aware of children's performances after watching Stranger Things and It and being like, holy shit, these are phenomenal actors. Let's get them back. And then we get them back and they're fucking six feet tall. It's like, these are performances you're never going to get as that, that performer, that actress is never going to be able to act like that young again. I mean, obviously that's that's for every actor, but Pedro Pascal, I mean, the dude's look like he's the same age for the past 20 years. You know, he does, you know, he's aging like fine wine. Halle Berry, aging like fine wine. But if you're a child and you're trying to give a child's performance, you are only got one shot to do it. You only have so much time as a director, as, as an actor, uh, to, you know, to kind of hone on the skills if they actually have them. So... You know, for a child actor to be really good at it um, is rare for one thing. But when they do, you you got to take take advantage of the acting skill and, and, and harness it, you know, because young performances are hard to find. And it's good that we were able to find Bella Ramsey at so young on Game of Thrones. I don't know what she's done before this. Let me see if she, she's done anything before this. Um Isabel May Ramsey, English actor, is known for her breakthrough role as a no, as a young noblewoman, Liana Mormont, and uh, the H. I don't know why I'm talking like that. HBO fantasy series, uh, Game of Thrones, 2016 and 2019. Subsequent roles uh, are Mildred Hubby uh, in the 2017 CBBC series and The Worst Witch. The voice of the title character uh, in the nan in the animated Netflix animated series Hilda and is Jane Grey and oh is Jane Grey Jane Grey yeah not Jean Grey Jane Grey in the twenty twenty two stars drama Becoming Elizabeth. She started in the 2022 historical comedy film Catherine called Birdie Ellie in the twenty twenty three hbo drama series the last of us she's she's gonna go places she's gonna be a phenomenal actress and i think she's got a very mature head on her shoulders based off of her performance as liana mormont you know she's it's it's you can kind of just um even her performance in uh as bella and sorry as um Ellie, sorry, as Ellie is uh, a very mature performance as well. So I'm anxious to see her continue on as an actor as well. So that is the first two episodes, really, of The Last of Us. Uh, I'm really sad that we lost Tess, obviously. Uh, one of my favorite characters of the first two episodes really made an impact in the little time she, she was on there. Um, so I guess we're going to continue on back. I really don't know what the plan is after this. I guess we're going to continue on to uh, save the girl, save the world, maybe eventually go meet up with Tommy. But that's kind of where I think we're going to go. Let me know what you thought about the review. Let me know what you thought about the TV show. Where do you think it's going to go? For everyone that has not seen it, remember, be kind. For everyone that has not read or, sorry, has not played the game, don't spoil everything for us. But uh, 
Let me know what you thought about the review. Let me know what you thought about the TV show. If there's anything else that I'm missing, please let me know. And uh, yeah, you know what to do. Take it easy.